Welcome to Our That Place in Praise. I'm Ginger, and I'm so excited to showcase a different type of art form in this episode. I guess I've never outgrown my love for dollhouses, so I'll make one out of fascination for everything tiny. This garden cafe is what I built from a kit I bought. I just have to say right off the bat that I added a bit of my personal touch in this project and I glued the accessories in other places instead of what the manual said I should do. But I did follow the manual about 95% of the time. It took me all in all about three weeks to complete this garden cafe in. And all that work was squeezed tightly into almost an hour of video, so I hope you can bear with me with the length of this episode and stay with me till the end. Okay, so let's start you off with a rundown of the tools we'll need for the build. You have to provide these tools yourself, they're not included in the kit. First and the most important is the glue. You'll want a tacky kind of glue that grabs instantly and dries clear and preferably won't leave a glossy finish and won't bubble up paper. I used Art Institute Glitter and Aline's. Beacon 3 and 1 and the German made Uhu are also great alternatives. You'll want to transfer that bottled glue into a plastic squeeze dispenser like this which has a precision tip so you can control the flow and squeeze out tiny dots at a time. You'll also need a ruler, preferably a metal one so it's not bendy. You'll need precision scissors that are sharp to the very tip and can handle very small detailed cuts. A soft grip would be nice because I tell you there are tons of cutting involved in these kits and your fingers can really stiffen after a while. You'll need a fine grit sandpaper or a polishing bar to remove the burrs from the wood pieces, but that is entirely optional. Another important tool is an X-Acto knife with a few spare blades in case your knife turns blunt. In this video, you'll see me use this with my ruler to cut straight lines faster. And of course, if you're using a craft knife, it's important to have a self-healing mat, to, uh, which is this green thing I have here. Next are tweezers, and these are indispensable, especially if you need to pick up beads or so small wires that are too tiny for your fingers to hold. I must admit, it takes a bit of practice to hold things with tweezers. Last but not least, you need a wire cutter because most kits have LED lights and music movement in them. This garden cafe only has lights, no music, but there are still a lot of wires to trim. Okay, let's look inside the box and what does this kit have? Dollhouse parts are often organized by bags and are labeled alphanumerically. Those bag labels correspond to the numbering in the manual, so you can easily match and identify the parts you'll need. While working on this cafe, I found that it was easier to keep all the parts in their designated bags until the time came for me to use them. It's kind of tempting to empty the bags and spread all the parts out on the table, but it's difficult to locate pieces, especially the tiny one, tiny ones. So if you're not in their numbered Ziplocs, some parts can get lost. And the problem with these kits is that the manufacturers allotted only enough materials to build one dull house. There are no extras at all. And so there's very little room for mistakes. So keep that in mind. You can't afford to misplace parts. What I love about this kit though is that the wood pieces and resin accessories are all of good quality. They, they don't look or feel cheap at all. This set also comes with a glass dust cover, which I have to build as well. Dust covers are great if you don't have a display cabinet at home and you want to protect your finished work from dirt. The, the manual is beautifully illustrated and printed in high quality glossy paper. However, the English here is the translation is a bit wonky and they're confusing in some parts. I actually created this video as an added guide to those of you who also bought this kit and need some extra help. Now the templates in the kit are very important. You can you need to cut them and these will serve as a guide for the fabric and crepe paper and transparency. You also have to cut all of these glossy prints, every single one of them. And as you can see, many of these pieces are so small. That's why you need precision scissors. Um, 
One thing I failed to mention in building this cafe, I used a lot of uh, I used fine tip markers. It's not really necessary, but I wanted to do my dollhouse differently. When the printed designs are cut and glued to the wood pieces, it will be obvious which part is the made of paper and which part is the wood. And to me, that looks kind of fake. So I use my markers to color the edges of the paper to blend them nicely into the wood. So if the wood is black, I color the paper with black. And if the wood is brown, I use a brown marker to camouflage the paper. Sometimes there are dotted lines as well to indicate where you should fold the paper. And I also try to cover those lines as best as I can. I, I know I'm being OC doing that, but I'm, I'm really happy with the results. The markers also came in handy when I needed to cover up some mistakes I made or to touch up the wood, the parts where I sanded the burrs away. So I kind of, they're discolored because they were not stained together with the rest of the wood. So I kind of had to use markers to cover them up. Anyway, this step is absolutely optional, even unnecessary. That's why I did this extra step off camera. But I did show portions of the coloring process towards the end of this video, a sort of a building technique and pro tip uh, for those of you who want to up the challenge and make your miniatures look more solid, uh, as if the designs were painted on the wood instead of printed on paper. Okay friends, that's all the explaining I needed to do, so enjoy the rest of the video.
friends, thanks for watching this miniature garden cafe project. I hope you enjoy the process and that this video encouraged you to take on this highly stimulating craft, which if I may add is perfect for developing not just your tweezer holding skills, but your patience as well. <laughs> If you managed to stick around to the very end and watched for the full hour, I'd say, wow, really, thank you. I'd give you double thumbs up if only my fingers weren't glued together. <laughs> All right, bye for now. Stay tuned to this channel for more miniature projects in the future. In the meantime, happy crafting.